Hello everyone. So in today's video, we are going to go over this paper titled A Survey of Data Augmentation Approaches for Natural Language Processing by Stephen Weifeng, Varun Gangal, Jason V, Sarah Chander, Sorosh Vasoghi, Teruko Mitamura and Edward Hovey. I'm really sorry if I mispronounce any of those names. Uh, they are from Carnegie Mellon, Google Research and Mila, Mila and Dalmouth. So before starting, uh, I'll also recommend if you are short on time and you just want to like just listen to the authors describe the paper briefly and give a general overview of the paper then I'll highly recommend this video and I'll be reading this paper in, in its entirety and uh, trying to explain stuff while also learning stuff. So let's get started. So the abstract. Data augmentation has recently uh, see, uh, seen increased interest in NLP due to more work in low resource domains, new tasks and the popularity of large scale neural, neural networks that require large amounts of training data. So low resource domains can be something like languages which have low uh, data. Despite this recent upsurge, this area is still relatively underexplored, perhaps due to the challenges posed by the discrete nature of language data. So what this implies is that, for instance, you have an image, randomly cropping an image still gives you an image, right? But if you uh, randomly try to like uh, skip some words, then it might just change the entire meaning. Despite the recent upsurge, uh, right? In this paper, we present a comprehensive and unifying survey of data augmentation for NLP by summarizing the literature in a structured manner. We first introduce and motivate data augmentation for NLP and then discuss major methodolog methodologically representative approaches. Next, we highlight techniques that are used for popular NLP applications and tasks. We conclude by outlining current challenges and directions for future research. Overall, our paper aims to clarify the landscape of existing literature in data augmentation for NLP and motivate additional work in this area. We also present a GitHub repository with a paper list that will be continuously updated. So this is the repository and you can see it has tons of paper, uh, papers. So let's uh, go to the introduction now. Data augmentation or DA refers to strategies for increasing the diversity of training examples without explicitly collecting new data. It has received active attention in recent machine learning research in the form of well-received general purpose techniques such as UDA and Mixup. These are often first explored in computer vision and DA's adaption for NLP seems secondary and comparatively underexplored, perhaps due to challenges presented by the discrete nature of language, which rules out continuous noisy and makes it hard to maintain invariance. So this, uh, what they're basically trying to say is, uh, very often we see techniques which were used in computer vision, uh, also getting extended to NLP if they are, uh, if they are applicable. And also the toolkit for uh, doing data augmentation on images is often larger than doing the same for uh, text samples. So you can see the trends for data augmentation. So the search for data augmentation is just going up. So uh, the number of people who are searching it per week. Despite these challenges, there has been increased interest and demand for DA for NLP. As NLP grows due to the off-shelf availability of large pre-trained models, there are increasingly more tasks and domains to explore. Many of these are low resource and have a paucity of training examples, creating many use cases for which DA can play an important role. So I'm not sure what positive means. Let me just look that up. Oh, scarcity, I guess. That's the right. Particularly for many non-classification NLP tasks such as span-based tasks and generation, DA research is relatively sparse despite the ubiquity in real-world settings. So I won't be explaining stuff which is like self-explanatory, but anything which I find non-trivial, I'll try to explain it. Our paper aims to sensitize the NLP community towards this growing area of work, which has also seen increasing interest in ML overall. An interest and work on this topic, as interest and work on this topic continues to increase, this is an opportune time for a paper of our kind. 
so firstly they give a bird's eye view for of da for nlp and secondly they identify key challenges to effectively motivate and orient interest in this area to the best of our knowledge this is the first survey to take a detailed look at da methods for nlp and uh, they mentioned that leo et al presents a smaller scale smaller scale text augmentation survey that is concise and focused our work serves as a more comprehensive survey with larger coverage and is more up to date all right this paper is structured as follows so section 2 discusses what da is its goals and trade offs and why it works section 3 discusses popular methodologically representative da techniques for nlp which we categorize into rule based example interpolation based or model based section 4 discusses useful nlp applications for da including low resource languages mitigating bias fixing class imbalance few shot learning and adversarial examples section 5 describes da methods for common nlp tasks including summarization question answering sequence tagging parsing grammatical error correction neural machine translation data to text nlg open ended and conditional text generation dialogue and multimodal tasks finally section 6 discusses challenges and future directions in da for nlp appendix a lists useful blog posts and code repositories all right so just a summary through this work we hope to emulate past papers which have surveyed da methods for other types of data such as images faces and time series we hope to draw further attention elicit broader interest and motivate additional work in da particularly for nlp one right. so background what is data augmentation da encompasses methods of increasing training data diversity without directly collecting more data because that can be time taking and expensive most strategies either add slightly modified copies of existing data or create synthetic data aiming for the augmented data to act as a regularizer and reduce overfitting when training ml models so if you have very few data points then your models are bound to overfit even if you train them for lesser number of epochs uh, so if you have more data it acts as a regularizer da has been commonly used in computer vision where techniques like cropping flipping and color jittering are a standard component of model training but as uh, you can just guess these are not directly uh, things which can be parallelly applied to nlp because cropping in some sense you can think of removing words but then you lose sense flipping is totally uh, removing all uh, grammatical rules and sense out of the sentence and color jittering i don't even know how you could think of uh, that in nlp in nlp where the input space is discrete how to capture effective augmented examples that capture the desired invariances is less obvious so what are the goals and trade offs despite challenges associated with text many da techniques for nlp have been proposed ranging from rule based manipulations to more complicated generative approaches as da aims to provide an alternative to collecting more data an ideal da technique should be both easy to implement and improve model performance so most offer trade offs between these two right so either they are easy to implement or they improve uh, model performance significantly so rule based techniques are easy to implement but usually offer incremental performance improvements techniques leveraging trained models may be more costly to implement because you need a gpu to train it and all that stuff but introduce more data variation leading to better performance boosts model based techniques customized for downstream tasks can have a strong effect on performance but be difficult to develop and utilize further the distribution of augmented data should neither be too similar nor too different from the original Uh, this may lead to greater overfitting or poor performance through trainings on examples so, uh, not representative of the given domain respectively so what they basically saying is is if you have data which is uh, very similar to the original data then you are effectively getting data points which are very close to each other and uh, your curve will again overfit because uh, even though the samples are more they are very similar to each other so you could think of it in some sense being trained on as the same sample with slight variations and if they are too different then your task might get uh, affected because then the data is not representative of the original task itself effective da approaches should aim for a balance so kashefi and hawar 2020 devise a kl divergence based unsupervised procedure to preemptively choose 
among DA heuristics rather than a typical run all heuristics comparison which can be very time and cost intensive. So in their approach, uh, they, they've devised some sort of method to choose one of the DA techniques instead of like trying out every uh, all of the multiple techniques and deciding which one suits your way best. So I'm not familiar with this work but this seems pretty interesting. Interpretation of data augmentation. So Dow et al 2019 note that data augmentation is typically performed in an ad hoc manner with little understanding of the underlying theoretical principles and claim the typical explanation of DA as regularization to be insufficient. Overall, there indeed appears to be a lack of research on why exactly data augmentation works. Existing work on this topic is mainly surface level and rarely investigates the theoretical underpinnings and principles. We discuss these challenges more in section 6 I guess and highlight some of the existing work below. <coughs> so Bishop 1995 show training with noise samples is reducible to Tikhonov regularization which subsumes L2. Rajput et al. 2019 show that DA can increase the positive margin for classifiers but only when augmenting exponentially many examples for common DA methods. Dow et al. 2019 think of DA transformations as kernels and find two ways DA helps. So by averaging of features and variance regularization and Shen et al. 2020D show that DA leads to variance reduction by averaging over orbits of the group that keep the data distribution approximately invariant. So these are some of the ways in which data augmentation techniques have been described more formally. Now let's have a look at techniques and methods. We now discuss some methodologically representative DA techniques which are relevant to all tasks via the extensibility of their formulation. Table 1 compares several DA methods by various aspects relating to applicability, dependencies and requirements. All right. So we will have a look at table 1 also later uh, when that pops up. Right. Uh, so let's have a look at rule based techniques first. So here we cover DA primitives which are easy to compute predetermined transform sans model components. So feature space DA approaches generate augmented examples in the model's feature space rather than the input space. Many few short learning approaches leverage estimated feature space analogy transformations between examples of known classes to augment for novel classes. Uh, Passionly et al. 2019 use iterative affine transformation and projections to maximally stretch an example along the class manifold. Wei and Zhu 2019 propose easy data augmentation EDA, a set of token level random perturbation operations including random insertion, deletion and swap. They show improved performance on many text level text classification tasks. So UDA shows how supervised DA methods can be exploited for unsupervised uh, data through consistency training on XDA experience. For paraphrase identification, Shen et al. Uh, construct a signed graph over the data with individual sentences as nodes and pair labels as signed edges. They use balanced theory and transitivity to infer augmented sentence pairs from this graph. Motivated by image cropping and rotation, Sahin and Seed Steedman propose dependency tree morphing. For dependency annotated sentences, children of the same parent are swapped or some deleted, as seen in figure 2. This is most beneficial for large families with rich case marking systems, example Baltic and Slavic. So in their case, this is a dependency tree morphing being applied to a Turkish sentence. So the same sentence you can see is being uh, uh, the words are being interchanged in, to form different uh, uh, augmented sentences. So what they essentially doing is the children of the same parent are swapped or deleted. So let's have a look. So this is a parent and this is a child. Children of the same parent. So do we have an example where the same parent has multiple children? Uh, I'm not sure. But what they're essentially trying to say is uh, if the same parent is there, they might either swap the order like they've swapped order in some of these sentences or even remove uh, words. So he wrote a letter, he wrote to her, her father he wrote. Alright, so, so this is 
cropping the sentences randomly and this is rotating the sentences and this is basically a dependency analysis so which word is dependent on which word uh, prior to this technique they've also mentioned other techniques which are rule based and uh, they've like given some an analogies so for instance EDA EDA uh, if I just google this up or I should have a link for EDA right so EDA is a technique which basically has four components either it does synonym replacement it either it does random insertion or it does random swaps or it does random deletions so the all of these seem pretty intuitive but as a whole this technique is pretty useful also since it does not use any significant uh, pre-computation or I should say it does not use any model and is rule based uh, it is also quite computationally uh, inex inexpensive next we have example interpolation techniques so another class of DA techniques pioneered by mixup interpolates the inputs and labels of two or more real examples so this class of techniques is also sometimes referred to as mixed sample data augmentation or MSDA so they are using multiple examples in the original dataset which is already pre-curated and annotated and stuff and then taking examples from that to create a new data point so ensuing work has explored interpolating inner components more general mixing schemes and adding adversaries so these are some works Sorry about that. Another class of extensions of mixup, which has been growing in the vision community, attempts to fuse raw input image pairs together into a single input image rather than improve the continuous interpolation mechanism. So, with the vision community, taking multiple images and combining them to be a single image data point. Okay, this sounds interesting. Examples of this paradigm include cut mix, cut out, and copy paste. For instance, CutMix replaces a small sub-region of image A with a patch sampled from image B with the labels mixed in proportion to sub-region sizes. This is potential to borrow ideas and inspiration from these works for NLP. So there is potential. Right. So I can see some uh, similarity or some like ideas popping up in my mind as well. So if you have two sentences and you take a say if you have a paragraph and uh, two paragraphs and you take one sentence and swap or if you have two sentences and you swap a phrase or a predicate then uh, it might have some potential to be a good uh, uh, data augmentation technique for example for multimodal works involving both images and text right a bottleneck to using mixup for NLP tasks was the requirement of continuous inputs this has been overcome by mixing embeddings or higher hidden layers Later variants propose speech tailored mixing schemes and interpolation with adversarial examples among others. So adversarial examples are basically examples which uh, let me just look up the exact definition. Yeah, so basically examples which are uh, like which are uh, especially sought after to sort of find where your model actually fails uh, sequence to mixup generalizes mixup for sequence transduction tasks in two ways the hard version samples a binary mask from a Bernoulli with a beta alpha alpha prior so from a beta distribution prior and picks from one of two sentences at each token position while the soft version softly interpolates between sequences based on a coefficient sample from the beta distribution the soft version is found to outperform the hard version and earlier interpolation based techniques like, like switch up. So this is like a, a more general version of mix up and this is uh, like they are describing how uh, words from one sentence is picked up and uh, in what technique is used so either they use a Bernoulli with a, a beta distribution prior or they do it based on a coefficient sample from the beta distribution so now let's have 
a look at the model based techniques sequence to sequence and language models have also been used for data augmentation the popular back translation method translates a sentence into another language and then back into the original language so this is pretty popular even in uh, textile transfer uh, you have this uh, cycle consistency loss which i feel in some ways is almost back translation only because you since you do not have the ground labels for you do not have a uh, parallel pairs in textile transfer so very often you'll see a uh, sentence a being converted to style 2 from style 1 and then reconverted to style 1 and compared to the original sentence kumar et al trained sequence to sequence models with their proposed method dips which learns to generate diverse paraphrases of input text using a modified decoder with a sub modular objective and show its effectiveness as data augmentation for several classification tasks pre-trained language models such as rnns and transformers have also been used for augmentation so in their model they're generating paraphrases of input text using a modified decoder with a sub modular objective i'm not sure what this part means but uh, this seems very really interesting because this using paraphrases which is also used in other works to generate Uh, additional samples, but they've uh, somehow used a different objective, which uh, I've not seen before. Pre-trained language models such as R N. Okay, so we've seen this. Kobayashi 2018 generate augmented examples by replacing words with others randomly drawn according to the recurrent language models distribution based on the current text. Yang et al. 2020 proposed G-Doc, which generates uh, synthetic examples using pre-trained uh, transformer language models, and selects the most informative and diverse set for augmentation. Gao et al. advocate retraining. Uh, I guess this should be retraining the full distribution through soft augmented examples, showing gains on machine translation. So let's have a look at what uh, this work is. so in their work what they've done is they've used language models uh to uh generate words for mask words so suppose they mask the word performance then they ask the recurrent neural network to predict which word fits here and uh they look for words apart from the original word so the these are the different words which are uh also fitting in similarly and they also pay heed to the label so the label should not change ni et al 2020 augment word representations with a context sensitive attention based mixture of the semantic neighbors from a pre trained embedding space and show its effectiveness for named entity recognition on social media text so from what i can get uh, understand from this they are uh, getting pre trained embeddings then picking up uh, embedding vector and looking in the vicinity and finding similar uh, embeddings and replacing words or augmenting words with those words inspired by denoising auto encoders ng et al uh, use a corrupt and reconstruct approach with the corruption function masking an arbitrary number of word positions and a reconstruction function unmasking them using bot This uh, their approach works well on domain shifted tests across nine datasets on sentiment, NLI, and NMT. Uh, I'm not sure what NLI stands for. Uh, natural language inference. NMT is neural machine translation, and sentiment is of course sentiment. So what they're basically doing is they're randomly deciding some words to corrupt using a corruption function, and then. uh using a pre-trained bot model to regenerate words which would fix which would fit in those masked locations feng et al 2019 proposed a task called semantic text exchange st which involves adjusting the overall semantics of a text to fit the context of a new word phrase that is inserted called the replacement entity they do this by using a system called smarty and a lang masked language model approach while not proposed directly for data augmentation it can be used as such as investigated in feng et al 2020 so i guess there's no photo here but uh, in the video which i was uh, talking about earlier they did showcase a slide for this so 
if you have a look what they basically doing is taking the input sentence so the input sentence is it is sunny outside oh uh, that means i must wear sunscreen i hate being sweaty and sticky all over then the replacement entity is the word rainy so now you have the sentence which uh, with the replaced entity so sunny is replaced with rainy then it passes through a model which masks words which were associated with sunny so sunscreen sweaty and sticky all over is uh, removed or masked then text in filling takes place so text in filling basically fills in words which fit uh, the context so instead of sunscreen you get bring an umbrella instead of sticky sweaty you get wet and uh, instead of sticky all over you get having to carry it around so the pipeline is basically consisting of entity replacement similarity masking and text in fillings for better uh, understanding you could either read this paper or also watch their explanation in the video if you find mine uh, not too well not too good so rather than starting from an existing example and modifying it some model based data augmentation approaches directly estimate a generative process from the training set and sample from it so an abi taver at all 2020 learn a label conditional generator by fine tuning gpt2 on the training data using this to generate candidate examples per class a classifier trained on the original training set is then used to select top k candidate examples which confidently belong to respective classes for augmentation okay so from what i can get the using a generative model like gpt2 on the training set a condition on particular classes to generate sentences then a classifier uh, is used to select the top k candidate examples which the classifier is highly confident belong to the particular particular class and then they are added to the respective class for augmentation so you've essentially increased your data size uh, quetine quetine at all 2020 uses similar label condition gpt2 generation method and demonstrated its effectiveness as a da method in an active learning setup all right so other approaches include syntactic or controlled paraphrasing document or story level paraphrasing augmenting misclassified examples bird cross encoder labeling of new inputs and guided generation using large scale generative language models models can also learn to combine together similar da primitives or add human in the loop so this is quite heavy they've just mentioned a lot of works and so to get an idea of all of these i guess the best way is to read these papers so i can't really comment on these right now but uh, these some of these seem pretty interesting especially uh, this one where they add human in the loop or where they uh, combine simpler da primitives okay so now let's have a look at applications but before that i'll just uh, quickly grab a glass of water and be right back right uh, so sorry uh, for that abrupt uh, thing i'm back all right so applications in this section we discuss several da methods for some common nlp applications so for uh, 4.1 uh, low resource languages so you can guess by the name itself you have less amount of data low resource languages are a, an important and challenging application for data augmentation typically for neural machine translation techniques using existing uh, external knowledge such as wordnet may be difficult to use effectively here there are uh, ways to leverage high resource languages for low resource languages particularly if they have similar linguistic properties but as you may guess many languages vary significantly for instance an indian language may vary significantly from a roman language or from uh, a language which is spoken in say some african subcontinent and so on uh, shia at all 2019 uh, used this approach to improve low resource neural machine translation Li et al. 2020 B used back translation and self learning to generate augmented training data. Inspired by work in computer vision, uh, Fade et al. 2017 generate additional training examples that contain low frequency rare words in synthetically uh, created contexts. Kin et al. 2020 present a uh, data augmentation framework to generate multilingual code switching data to fine tune multilingual bot. It encourages the alignment of representations from source and multiple target languages once by mixing their context information. They see improved performance across five tasks with 19 languages. So I'll just sneak sneak and uh, steal the slide again. 
Uh, so I think this, this is also right. So if you can, if you have a look at uh, the example which is being shown here, I'll just check if the slides are available. Um, I guess not. So, so they have the original data. Then they select some sentences. Then they select some tokens, and then they replace uh, the sent uh, tokens selected. So different shades yellow color is different shades yellow color and D represent different language translations. So this is basically a code mix version of the language where you essentially replace some words uh, with different words. So and here the different shadings are indicative of different languages. So instead of showing the example multiple times, they've shown if language A was there, then these words would be there and so on. Okay, so this is table one and they've compared the methods with uh, if external knowledge is required, if pre-trained, if it is pre-trained, if there is some pre-processing, uh, if at what level it occurs and if it's ta task agnostic or not. So comparing the selection of uh, DA methods by various aspects relating to their applicability, dependencies and requirement, external knowledge, KWE, to constant depth, stand for external knowledge, keyword extraction, tokenization, uh, constituency parsing and dependency parsing respectively. External knowledge refers to whether the data augmentation method requires external knowledge like WordNet and pre-trained if, if, if it requires a pre-trained model like Word. Pre-process denotes pre-processing required, level denotes the depth at which data is modified and task agnostic refers to whether the data augmentation method can be applied to different tasks. So Appendix B has further explanation. Now about mitigating bias, this is another uh, application. So Zao et al. 2018 attempt to mitigate gender bias in co-reference resolution by creating an augmented dataset identical to the original but biased towards the underrepresented gender. So they swap he to she and so on and train on the union of the two datasets. Lu et al. 2020 formally proposed counterfactual DA, CDA for gender bias mitigation, which involves casual interventions that break associations between gendered and gender, gender neutral words. Zmegrod et al. and Hall Motsley et al. propose further improvements to CDA. Musavi et al. augment training sentences with the corresponding predicate argument structures, improving the robustness of transformer models against various types of biases. So you may guess why this is an important task. Uh, for instance, I've seen examples on Twitter where in some languages, uh, if you ask a model to generate a sentence or even translate from a gender neutral uh, tone to some other language, some words are uh, associated with say the word he and some go with he. So you're more likely to see some work which uh, is related to physical labor being translated with uh, the pronoun he being used. And in some works, such as say the job of a nurse, the model is more likely to use the pronoun she because that is what uh, the data it saw was biased towards. So uh, using these techniques, the more you reduce the bias in the model. Fixing class imbalance typically involves a combination of undersampling and oversampling. Uh, synthetic minority oversampling techniques mode which uh, generates augmented minority class samples through interpolation still remains popular. Multilabel SMOT modifies SMOT to balance classes for multilabel classification where classifiers predict more than one class at a time. Other techniques such as EDA can possibly use for oversampling as well. So fixing class imbalance, EDA we saw. Fixing class imbalances, suppose you have two data point, two data sets, say for hate speech and non-hate speech then you might frequently encounter this problem that the data for hate speech is relatively much less than what you can find for non-hate speech, right? Because to find hate speech data, you also need to be sure that that data is hate speech, which requires human annotation. While for uh, non-hate speech data, you can just say pick up Wikipedia articles or books and so on. So if you train a classifier on say a very hugely skewed data set, then your results will also have a class imbalance. 
for few short learning data augmentation methods can ease few short learning by adding more examples for novel classes introduced in the few short phase hari harin and uh, gorship 2017 use analogy transformations so phi of z1 z2 and x between example pairs from a non novel class z1 to z2 to generate augmented examples x2 x bar for uh, x prime for novel classes all right schwartz et al generalize this to beyond just linear offsets through their delta network auto encoder which learns the distribution uh, the probability of z2 given z1 uh, c for on all c pairs where c is a class okay for cla- a given class of pairs where c is a class and y is a ground truth label uh, is a ground truth labeling function both these methods are applied only on image tasks but their theoretical formulations are generally applicable and hence we discuss them so this part is something which i am not really uh, uh, familiar with and i haven't really worked with these techniques or seen them before so i really can't comment on these but from what i guess uh, what i get is so they have a non novel class and a novel class they want to learn in the no- about the novel class so they will take a pair from the non novel class and use it to uh, augment examples from the novel class so somehow they are gaining information from this transformation and you uh, so they are using some sort of analogy transformation which they have learned and applying it to other classes in this other work they've just extended this to beyond just linear offsets so they have some network uh, delta encoder network which learns a distribution which uh, uh, so this somehow is just a linear offset but their work is uh, not restricted to only linear uh, changes kumar et al 2019 we applied these and other dm methods for few short learning of novel intent classes in task oriented dialog v et al 2021 a show that data augmentation facilitates curriculum learning for training triplet networks for few short text classification li et al use t5 to generate additional examples for data scarce classes so i guess this was pretty uh, self explanatory the last part t5 is uh, transformer to transformer okay i am not sure about the full form t5 nlp text to text Uh, something if i'm not wrong yeah text to text transfer transformer so they use this to generate uh, uh data for data scarce classes then in this work they show that data augmentation facilitates curriculum learning so what is curriculum learning you might wonder curriculum learning is basically a form of uh, learning where you give the machine progressively difficult examples so at first you do not give the machine like very difficult uh, examples to learn from but as the model learns then you give it progressively more difficult examples now for adversarial examples adversarial examples can be generated using noxious label preserving transformation that full state of the art nlp models specifically they add sentences with distractor span soup passages to construct adversarial examples for span based uh, question answering Zhang et al construct adversarial examples for paraphrase detection using word swapping Kang et al and Glockner et al create adversarial examples for textual entanglement using word net relations so basically the entire point of an adversarial example is to uh, uh, trick the nlp model uh, to say classify it wrongly or translate it wrongly or anything of that sort so these are some techniques which are used there now let's have a look at tasks so in this section we discuss several data augmentation works for common nlp tasks we focus on non classification tasks such as classification is worked on by default and well covered in earlier sections so we have yeah, seen that numerous previously mentioned data augmentation techniques have been used or can be uh, used for text classification tasks all right so summarization So Fabry et al 2020 investigate back translation as a data augmentation method for few short abstractive summarization with the use of consistency loss inspired by UDA uh, Parida and Mot- Motlisek 
2019 proposed an iterative data augmentation approach for abstractive summarization that uses a mix of synthetic and real data, where the former is generated using common crawl. All right. Uh, Zoo et al. introduced a query focused summarization uh, dataset collected using Wikipedia called Wikiref, which can be used for data augmentation. Uh, Pasanuru et al. used data augmentation methods to construct two training datasets for query focused multi document summari summarization called uh, QMDS CNN and QMDS IR by modifying CNN, uh, DM, and mining search query logs, respectively. Alright, so these are different methods by which the uh, documentation is being correctly done in summarization techniques. So these are some of the latest works. Now for question answering, Long Pre et al. 2019 investigate various data augmentation and sampling techniques for domain agnostic question answers, question answering, including paraphrasing by back translation. So I guess using back translation, they modify the answers, modify the questions and so on. Yang et al. proposed a data augmentation method using distance supervision to improve BERT fine tuning for open domain question answering. Riabi et al. leveraged question generation models to produce augmented examples for zero shot cross lingual question answering. So they've generated new questions I guess and used pre-existing answers. Singh et al. 2019 proposed Excel DA or cross lingual DA, which substitute a portion of the input text with its translation in another language, improving performance across multiple languages on NLI tasks, including the squad question answering task. So, I guess in some sense, this is code mixing because if you're mixing different languages, then it does seem to be the definition of uh, fit into the definition of code mixed language. Asai and Haji Shirzi 2020 used logical and linguistic knowledge to generate additional uh, training data to improve the accuracy and consistency of QA models responses by models. U et al. 2018 introduced a new question answering architecture called QA Net that shows improved performance on squad when combined with augmented data generated using back translation. So if we clearly look back translation is one of the clear methods then you have question generation models you have this method using distance supervision but uh, it hasn't been described really here and then you have using some sort of code mixing and using logical and linguistic knowledge to generate additional training data so how many tasks are there okay so there are quite a few tasks next we have sequence tagging tasks so ding at all 2020 a proposed uh, DAGA a two-step data augmentation process first a language model over sequences of tags and words linearized as per certain scheme is learned second sequences are sampled from this language model and delinearized to generate new examples okay uh, sequences sampled from this language model i don't know why but this reminds me of getting a hidden state representation in an encoder decoder bottleneck model but this is different I guess so first a language model over sequences of tags and words linearized as per certain scheme okay so you have a language model then sequences are sampled from this language model and delinearized to generate new examples so right so we are first doing something and then inverting the process Sahin and Shreedman discussed uh, so we've seen this uh, dependency tree morphing to generate additional examples using uh, on the downstream task of post tagging die and edil 2020 modified data augmentation, augmentation techniques proposed for sentence level tasks for ner including label wise token and synonym replacement and show improved performance using both recurrent neural nets and transformer models uh, zhang et al 2020 proposed a da method called based on mix up called sequmix for active sequence labeling by augmenting queried samples showing improvements on NER and event detection. Next, we let's have a look at parsing tasks. So Jia and Liang 2016 proposed data recombination for injecting task-specific priors to neutral semantic parsers. A synchronous context-free grammar SCFG is induced from training data and new recombinant examples are sampled. 
you at all 2020 introduced grappa a pre-training approach for table semantic parsing and generate synthetic question sql pairs via an scfg andreas 2020 use compose uh, compositionality to re to construct synthetic examples for downstream tasks like semantic parsing so fragments of original examples are replaced with fragments from other examples in similar context so i guess we've seen this in some form earlier before so if you remember clearly we had that example where uh, there was this vision task where uh, you took two images and some subset of image two was used to replace some subset of image one all right so vanier et al 2019 investigate data augmentation for low resource dependency parsing including dependency tree morphing from sanin and steven which we saw and modified non sentence generation from uh, gulo dava et al which replaces content words with other words of the same part of speech morphological feature and dependency labels so also this seems like a pretty valid approach and somehow resembles synonyms because i feel that uh, words which have the same part of speech same morphological features and dependency labels might be synonyms but uh, morphological let's just be sure why is there no english meaning scientific study of structure okay so i guess synonyms might not fit in if this looks at character level morphology next we have grammatical error correction gec so lack of parallel data is typically a barrier for gec various works have thus looked at da methods for gec so you need to have a wrong sentence and a correct sentence to teach the model okay from this wrong sentence you need to go to this correct grammatical sentence uh there is work that makes use of additional resources so boyd uses german edits from wikipedia revision history and uses those relating to gec as augmented training data so wikipedia revision history might have uh edits which mention that uh, they fix grammatical correction so they act as additional data zang et al explore multitask transfer or the use of annotated data from other tasks there is also work okay so data from other tasks might include something where you pick up data from say reddit and then do some things on it but the human annotated data is grammatically correct and the reddit data is grammatically incorrect so you can in some sense uh int extrapolate that data for your use case there is also work that adds synthetic errors to noise the text vang et al investigate two approaches so token level perturbations and training error generation models with a filtering strategy to keep the generation with sufficient errors so you fool yourself create such fake examples uh grant kivix uh grant kivix at all 2019 i'm really sorry if i'm mispronouncing names use confusion sets generated by a spell checker for noising uh, show you at all 2019 learn error patterns from small annotated samples along with post specific noising there have also been approaches to improve the diversity of generated errors so van et al investigate noising through editing and the latent representation of grammatical sentences and z et al use a neural sequence transduction model and beam search noising procedure so these are just different procedures which are being used right. uh next let's have a look at neural machine translation so we've already seen some examples Wang et al proposed switch out a method that randomly replaces words in both source and target with other random words from corresponding vocabulary so you get new pairs gao et al introduce soft contextual da that softly augments randomly chosen words in a sentence using a contextual mixture of multiple related words over the vocabulary uh new 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 in et al 2020 proposed data diversification which merges original training data with the prediction of several forward and backward models so i these seem pretty similar in the sense that you are uh, trying to augment by swapping words but this last one seems uh, different next we have data to text nlg so data to text nlg refers to tasks which require generating natural language description of structured or semi structured data input so you give it a game table and it generates some sort of description 
randomly perturbing game score values without invalidating overall game outcome is a the one da strategy explored in game summary generation two okay so you might slightly tweak the score by which one team won and then get a new uh, sentence two popular recent benchmarks are e2e nlg and web nlg both involve generation from structured inputs meaning representative uh, meaning representation sequences and triple sequences respectively uh, montella et al show performance gain on web nlg by data augmentation using wikipedia sentences as targets and past open ie triple sas inputs tandon et al proposed da for e2e nlg based on per muting the input mr sequence hz and Mac, uh, mckeon 2019 inject gaussian noise into training decoder hidden states and sample diverse augmented examples from it this sample augmentation augment uh, augmentary train uh, i'm not really sure if sample augment retrain okay <laughs> i was thinking this is one word this sample augment retrain loops helps performance on e2e energy tasks okay so this is something which i am i didn't really uh, work i haven't really seen or worked with but this also seems pretty new uh, interesting on this uh, for strategy was pretty intuitive one side reddits and uh, this one also seems pretty interesting so you can basically use pre existing data sets on from wikipedia sentences i guess also apart from this so you can pick up what wikipedia says but i guess that would also already be a part of the original data set so ignore what i just said this last thing i've seen in some works where they use some gaussian noise injected into some state of the model and but i've not seen this uh, for data augmentation before so this seems pretty interesting uh since this a lot of work left uh, i'll just be back again after having a glass of water because this is really a burden for my throat right uh, so i'm back so i'll go back okay so now let's have a look at open ended and conditional generation there has been limited work on data augmentation for open ended and conditional text generation Feng et al. experiment with a suite of DA methods for fine-tuning GPT-2 on low-resource domain in attempts to improve the quality of generated continuations, which they call Genog. They find that uh, W and WordNet hypers, so WordNet hypernym replacement of keywords and synthetic noise are useful, and the quality of generated text improves to a peak at 3x the original number of training amount of training data. So basically. you have one set and you generate two sets using these techniques because all together they'll be 3x this was this is pretty interesting to note this number to be more precise because this gives some indication of what amount of uh, augmented data works for some tasks for dialogue most uh, da approaches work for dialogue focus on task oriented dialogue we outline some below and more can be found in the appendix koan and shyam present sentence and word level da approaches for end to end task oriented dialogue luwan and magnini propose lightweight augmentation a set of word span and sentence level da methods for low resource slot filling and intent classification word span and sentence level da methods okay who at all propose a sequence to sequence da framework to augment dialogue utterances for dialogue language understanding including a diversity rank to promote diverse utterances zhang proposes mada to generate diverse responses using the property that several valid responses exist for a dialogue context there is also da work for spoken dialogue uh, these works have investigated da methods for dialogue and spoken language understanding including generative latent variable models so this is basically your uh, chatbot kind of stuff next let's have a look at multimodal tasks so multimodal tasks are tasks where you have more than one modality of input so you have text you might have images also you might have audio also and so on da techniques have been proposed for multimodal tasks where aligned data for multiple modalities is required 
we look at some here. So beginning with speech, uh, Wang et al. proposes a DA method to improve the robustness of downstream dialogue models to speech recognition errors. Uh, Weissner et al. and uh, Rendu Shintala et al. propose DA methods for end-to-end -end automatic speech recognition. Looking at images or videos, Zhu et al. learn a cross-modality matching network to produce synthetic image text pairs for multimodal classifiers. Attila and Sisov explore DA methods such as synonym replacement and contextual word embedding augmentation using BERT for image captioning. So for the same image, you will generate multiple caption variations. These works propose methods for visual QA, including question generation and adversarial examples. All right, so we've finished the tasks and now let's have a look at the challenges and future direction of works. So looking forward, data augmentation faces substantial challenges specifically for NLP and with these challenges, new opportunities for future works arise. So there's dissonance between empirical novelties and theoretical narrative. There appears to be a conspicuous lack of research on why DA works. Most studies might show empirically that a DA technique works and provide some intuition, but it is currently challenging to measure the goodness of a technique without resorting to a full-scale experiment. A recent work in Vision has proposed that affinity, the distributional shift caused by DA, and diversity, the complexity of augmentation can predict DA performance, but it is unclear how these results might translate to NLP. So this is pretty interesting to see that at like the very basic level, we could maybe say that these techniques are only being used because empirically they've worked when well, any technique is used for that reason, but there's no clear cut answer as to why they're working. Minimal benefit for pre-trained models on in-domain data. So with the popularization of large pre-trained language models, it has recently come to light that a couple of previously effective DA techniques for uh, certain text classification tasks in English provide little benefit for models like BERT and Robota, which already achieve high performance on in-domain text classification. So already on the existing data set, they have so low error, uh, so high performance that uh, that even when uh, you have uh, used some data augmentation technique, the gain is not really visible. One hypothesis for this could be uh, that using simple DA techniques provides little benefit when fine-tuning large pre-trained transformers on tasks for which examples are well represented in the pre-training data. But uh, DA methods could still be effective when fine-tuning on tasks for which examples are scarce so, or out of domain compared with the training data. So for say a low resource language, further work could study under which scenarios data augmentation for large pre-trained model is likely to be effective. All right. Now for multimodal challenges, while there has been increased work in multimodal DA, effective DA methods for multiple multimodalities has been challenging. Many works focus on augmenting a single modality or multiple ones separately. So you do image separately, video separately and so on. For example, there is potential to further explore simultaneous image and text uh, augmentation for image captioning, such as a combination of cut mix and caption editing. For span-based tasks, uh, they offer unique challenges as uh, they are typically many correlated classification decisions. So for example, random token replacement may be a locally acceptable DA method, but possibly disrupt co-reference chain for ladder sentences. DA techniques must be taken into account dependencies between different locations in the text. So for a span based task, suppose you have five spans and you do some sort of reordering, then you also lose that span uh, data which comes from the inherent uh, uh, position of the word. Working in specific specialized domains such as those with uh, domain specific jargon like medicine can present challenges. So things like WordNet cannot be used effectively here. Studies have shown that DA becomes less beneficial when applied to out-of-domain data, like because likely because the distribution of augmented data can substantially differ from the original data. Because if you generate augmented data from something like WordNet, then uh, the augmented data, the distribution for augmented data would vastly differ from the distribution of say a medical data set because WordNet does not really uh, focus on a niche uh, domain specific vocabulary. Next, working with low resource languages may present similar difficulties uh, as specialized domains. Further, DA techniques uh, successive, 
uh, further DA technique successful in the higher resource scenario may not be effective for low resource languages that are of different language family or very distinctive in linguistic and typological terms because some say uh, languages are written in uh, very different scripts and have very different writing styles for example those la which are language isolates or lack high resource cognates more vision inspired techniques although many nlp da methods have been inspired by analogies up analogous approaches in cv there is potential for drawing further connections so many cv da techniques motivated by real world invariances may have similar nlp interpretations so for grayscaling uh, we could have uh, translated to toning down aspects so plural to singular awesome to good and so on Morphing a dependency tree could be analogous to rotating an image, and paraphrasing techniques may be analogous to changing perspective. For example, negative data augmentation involves creating out-of-distribution samples. It has so far been exclusively explored for computer vision, but could be investigated for text as well. All right. For self-supervised learning, more recently, DA has uh, been increasingly used as a key component of self-supervised learning, particularly in vision. In NLP, Bart uh, showed that predicting deleted tokens as a pre-trained task can achieve similar performance as the masked language model. And Electra found that pre-training by predicting corrected tokens outperforms BERT given the same model size, data, and compute. So we expect future work will continue exploring these uh, tasks. So this is quite similar to what we saw earlier, where you had that corruption function and that regeneration function. Offline versus online data augmentation. So in computer vision, standard techniques such as cropping, color jittering, and rotations are typically done stochastically, so allowing for DA to inco be incorporated elegantly into the training pipeline. In NLP, however, it is unclear how to include a lightweight code module to apply DA stochastically. This is because DA techniques for NLP often leverage external resources, so like a dictionary for token substitution or a translation model for back translation, which are compute heavy that are not easily transferable across model training pipeline. Thus, a common practice for DA and NLP is simply to generate augmented data offline, store it, and then load it during training. Further work on lightweight module for online uh, DA and NLP could be fruitful, though another challenge will be determining when such a module will be helpful, which compared with CV, where the invariances being imposed are well accepted, can vary substantially across NLP tasks. So in computer vision, some NLP, some and variances are pretty much used everywhere such as rotating or flipping and so on but in NLP tasks this may vary from task to task and even for a task from dataset to dataset depending on the linguistic properties of the language being used. A lack of unification so this is a challenge for the current literature of data augmentation and popular methods are often presented in an auxiliary fashion whereas there are well accepted frameworks for data augmentation for computer vision. The default augmentation libraries in PyTorch, RAND, or Augment. There are no generalized DA techniques for NLP. Further, we believe that DA research would benefit from the establishment of standard and unified benchmark tasks and datasets to compare different augmentation methods. This is pretty uh, self explanatory, I guess, because if you have one good uh, task or one good standard to compare to, then Whenever you use a new data augmentation technique, you might also uh, give it a go on that standard task to see how well does it perform in relation to other techniques. Even though it might be good for your task, it might not be good for other tasks. Good data augmentation practice would help more make a DA work more accessible and reproducible. On top of unified benchmark tasks, datasets and framework libraries mentioned, other good practices include making code and augmented datasets publicly available, reporting variations among results, and more standardized evaluation procedures. So you might have seen this on Twitter because uh, many people complain that certain random seats are being used extensively, which give much better results. Further transparent hyperparameter analysis explicitly stating failure cases of proposed techniques and discussion of the intuition and theory behind them would improve the transparency and interpretability of DA techniques. So someone further down the line uh, might uh, learn from those mistakes and okay not waste time doing the same mistakes again for the conclusion in this paper we presented a comprehensive and structured survey of da for nlp we provide a background about da and how it works discuss major methodologically representative da techniques for nlp 
and touched upon data augmentation techniques for NLP applications and tasks. Finally, we outlined current challenges and directions for further research and showed that there is much room for further exploration. Overall, we hope our paper can serve as a guide for NLP researchers to decide on which DA techniques to use and inspire additional research. So this is this repository. I won't be going through the appendix because this video is already too long and this is something which I'll also go in over in my free time but the appendix seems pretty small so you can go through it yourself as well. Overall this paper was pretty great. I needed to have a look at data augmentation techniques for some of my other uh, projects so this was a great read and I also enjoyed sharing it with you guys. If you have any suggestions please comment down below if you have any corrections as well and thank you guys for watching. Hope to see you next time as well.